Make sure you hit that subscribe button. Make sure you ring that notification bell. And make sure to share this with everyone you know to help us beat that massive YouTube algorithm. The Mass Effect trilogy were some of the most influential games to ever release. It proved that gaming could, in fact, have stories as good as Hollywood. And yet, it all came crashing down in the last 15 minutes. Let's take a look at Mass Effect 3, eight years later. One of the best space operas to have come out. Star Trek The Next Gen. It's your episode, Matt. <laughs> it, is. <laughs> it is. This it is. is yours. <laughs> this was your baby. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah no, no. I was going to say, uh, <laughs> the original trilogy of Star Wars movies. I think uh, you could put some Battlestar Galactica in there. You want to name the thing we're talking about? Nah, I'm good. People already know. <laughs> <laughs> no, Mass Effect. Definitely, <laughs> at least within gaming, probably one of the best built worlds that we've seen come out of... Uh, yeah, you know, and um, obviously very heavily inspired by Star Wars. Um, well, at least they're at least Kotor, and I yeah. I I played Kotor one. Yeah, I played Kotor two more, but uh, there's a lot there. You can really see how the studio um, advanced and what they took from Kotor, yeah. and 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 built through into uh, Mass Effect. Oh, indeed, and you know, obviously Mass Effect was a big you know step away from that kind of D and D style. Semi turn based or turn based yeah. combat that you saw with like Baldur's Gate and Everwinter Nights and all that. But no, it's uh, it's interesting. You know, obviously the big and there will be spoilers in this. I'm discussing the ending of Mass Effect Three. So spoilers. Spoiler warning. Spoilers. Spoiler the whole video warning. is spoilers. the whole video is a spoiler warning. Spoilers. Um, lies. It's all lies. Well, lies. But um, I'm gonna put invaders in in there. <laughs> you're right. Lies. The. Uh, <laughs> The way they built it up is, um, you know, the original premise is that, you know, Commander Shepard is the first human um, in a law enforcement role called a Spectre. It, it is a uh, agent that only answers directly to the highest level of government in the galaxy and otherwise can do whatever they want. They can So they're like Galaxy Secret Service almost? Sort of, yeah. That's kind of cool. And it's, 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 it is. I know very little about Mass Effect, only what he's told me. I've not played the games personally, which I will have to go through and play them at this point. And now. the but reason he... He's uh, the Mass Effect yeah. guy. He knows this. He's our resident video game guy. So. Yeah, indeed. No, the reason that, you know, you as Commander Shepard get this role is because you have to go chase down a rogue Spectre, one that went bad, named oh. Saren. And, uh... As you play through the game, recruit your team, and start uncovering the mystery, you realize that what Saren is doing is trying to uh, bring back a race of sentient machines known as the Reapers. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, I know yeah. about the Reapers, yeah. Yeah. And the reason he's doing this is he thinks by allying with the Reapers that he can get, you know, the organics of the galaxy a reprieve, be useful and live, as opposed to be rebellious and die. Doesn't work, but... Boy, that's an interesting. That's an interesting concept. There, would you rather would you rather die a free man or live as a slave? I former for me. But yeah. yeah. Well, Manobo, that that's actually a really interesting concept. I mean, probably one of the reasons that Mass Effect is so widely. I mean, even prior to knowing you, I'd still even come across some Mass oh, yeah. Effect stuff just uh, in, on my own stuff, and and so. And then Mass Effect Two picks up. Um, where uh, two years later, um, Shepard is killed and then resurrected. It was a, yeah, like straight up spaced, blown out the airlock. Okay, okay, hold on, <laughs> hold on, hold on. All right, all right, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> and maybe it wasn't as done up at the time that these games were coming out. Can death mean anything anymore? Because we keep killing people, we keep bringing them back. <laughs> they die, they come back, this they was die, pre, they this, come this back. This was pre-time travel, and this was sci-fi mumbo-jumbo, not time travel mumbo-jumbo. Uh, so, but it's not, it's just... <laughs> but anyway... Um, okay, all right, fine. So, and it, what it was... Fine, is so it, we brought another dead guy back from the dead, because he's the only one that can do it. Was he the only one that could do it? Yep. He was the only one that yep. could do it? Yep. Yeah, yep. yeah. Because yep. that's the only reason we ever... Bring God. <laughs> yep. So, we're already... I'm sorry, I'm not... I'm, <laughs> And I'm not bashing these games. I just that that is such an overused trope. Oh, it is. The, but 
the yep. resurrection trope. It's been 2,000 years, people. We're still using it. <laughs> I just heard a disturbance in the... I felt the disturbance in the force on that one. <laughs> We're but, still here like, yeah, no, let's you know, make everybody but, come back. But, yeah, no. Uh. All right, the, no, the, anyway. the in-universe explanation is this: uh, there's a splinter organization called Cerberus, um, guard dog of Hades. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, that's for them, not for you. I have a red Dante's Inferno. Yes, which anyway. I actually still have my uh, uh, my copy. Still, it's a 1932. Yeah, indeed, we're not it's, on that. It's falling apart. We're not on that, oh, nerd. <laughs> Love Dante's Inferno. Go on, sorry. But, um, but no, yes, I know who Cerberus yes. is. Which some people call them call him Cerberus. No, it's no, Cerberus. 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 And um, so they bring Shepard back, and the in-world excuse for why this is only him is because it is one-of-a-kind customized technology that costs somewhere in the billion, and somewhere in the trillions of uh, dollars to do. Well... Billions, trillions, high billions, low trillions. Yeah. Like that. Well, and when you but when you start thinking about galaxy wide stuff, trillions, yeah. that starts to become less of a massive number. But the po- but, but yeah. the point is, is it's still massive enough that you wouldn't just do this for a private who they who no because he's the only one that can do it. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Sorry. That's the in Sorry. universe. Sorry, I'm. But anyway, so the reason they bring back Shepard is because he's familiar with fighting the you know they kill you kill a Reaper at the end of Mass Effect. Yeah. Sovereign. And then uh, Mass Effect 2, human colonies are disappearing. We think it's a retaliation through an agent of the Reapers mm-hmm. called the Collectors. And so it's Shepard's job to go track them down and figure out what they're doing and how this ties in with the Reapers. Turns out that what they are is they, they made the deal with the Reapers-ish. They're Protheans, the ancient civilization from 50,000 years ago, and they are like the cybernetic slaves of the Reapers now. Hmm. And so you deal with that. And then the third game ties in all these. And there are so many disparate threads that you get to see throughout the course of this game. One is called the Genophage. It is an um, engineered uh, viral infection that causes a genetic mutation in a species called the Krogan, who rebelled a couple thousand years ago. And it keeps them from reproducing too much. We have a dog who's going to jack up our camera. Nope, nope. Okay, he's good. <laughs> Sorry. I was just watching him and I was like, what's he going to do? Because he's old and doesn't give a damn. He'll knock over tables and say, he don't care. Oh, yeah, no, no. He'll just lay down where he wants to lay down. Oh, yeah, no. He, he's good. He's on the couch now. He's on the couch now. Okay. But, you know, <laughs> so then, you know, finally we get to three, you know, where we're at, we actually have to deal with the ramifications of the genophage. It's a uh, sterility virus. Only one in 1,000 pregnancies are viable to keep population under control and the Krogan from expanding too fast. Okay. I like... Okay, I'm there. I'm there. Yeah, and so... But now you need the Krogan to help fight the Reapers. So do you cure them or do you not? Because they'll only fight for you if you cure the Genophage. Oh, God. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. I gotta all right, play these games on, now. moving on, moving on. No, you're yeah. good. I gotta play these games now. Okay. Yeah. Um, then uh, you have the race called the Quarians. They were driven off their homeworld by another artificial race that they created called the Geth. Yes. And now they float around in a migrant fleet. They have to wear spacesuits from being in sterile environments anytime they go groundside. Mm-hmm. And oftentimes, even on their ships, if they've been anywhere near, you know, a contaminant anytime right. soon. And so, but the thing is, is that they attacked the Geth first. The Geth only drove them off in retaliation. And you can solve it. You can kill the Quarians. You know, let the Geth kill the Quarians. You can let the Quarians kill the Geth, or you can try and sue for peace. What do you do? Do you trust the AI? Do you not trust the AI? Are they really people? Are they really not? Okay, so the last 15 minutes of this whole series, this... The Reapers are all controlled by an AI that we've never heard of, and oh, by the way, if you kill the Reapers, you kill all this... uh, AIs that are in the galaxy, if you can try and control the Reapers, in which case you're the unknowable space god in charge of the Reaper fleets. Or, and this is the weird one, this is the really weird one, and I have no idea what head gymnastics you have to do to get this one. You can fuse organic and synthetic material into a new form of DNA and make everybody a cyborg? So from what I know... And it's about Mass Effect Three. They promise that everything. So what? Which all one of these the choices things? from from game one all the way up to game three were going to matter in the end. And but which one of these things is not like the other? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Well, and from what I'm to understand is that the one thing, the one complaint that a lot of people have is that the one thing that Bioware should have taken from KOTOR that it didn't was the uh, the outcome of the game where you actually got, you know, it actually changed the story depending on your... You have a bit now. They actually had to release a free DLC back after this <laughs> thing dropped. <laughs> Expanding on the endings. Yeah. To but, try and... But and, but that's but, the, the th but it seems like it, they it, that, but even that's based off of one choice in Kotor, there were all it, and it affected the story very drastically. And here's the thing, and here's why I've you know backed off a little bit. The, the final fifteen minutes are still not the best. <laughs> not the best. <laughs> um, but I have a deeper appreciation for the game as a whole now because a lot of the decisions you make throughout the first two games and that game as well have um, consequences in three. So, um, let's put it this way. Um, there's a Quarian that you meet, Tally, right. in Mass Effect 1. She's who gives you uh, evidence against Saren, gets you promoted to Spectre, and that starts off the whole chain of pursuing right. Saren that, and discovering the Reapers. Right. Well, through the course of the three games, she rises from a you know, 18, 19-year-old kid um, out on her pilgrimage, a rite of passage to learn about the galaxy, mm -hmm. to an admiral in okay. the fleet. And you watch her growth as a character. But she can die in two. If you screw up the suicide run on the uh, collectors, she can die. And that's an admiral, admiral missing. You can't... She's no longer there. She's not an admiral. And so that takes the peace option off the board. Without Tally there, you can either pick Geth or Quarian. Interesting. If Legion, who is a one of the Geth... Okay, so what... It, so, so, so If he dies in Mass Effect 2, then... You may not have the sympathies for the Geth that you would if you actually interact with him. So here's my question, yeah. though. The final 15 minutes, you still didn't answer it. What did they screw up? And I don't know. That's why it's more of a retrospective. It's the fact you said that the final 15 minutes, it's and you have always said this, is the final 15 minutes did not seem conducive to this trilogy. No, because everything about it is either... You know best, or you try and unite the races, right? It's Paragon Renegade. Paragon is the peace, yep. the warrior diplomat. The Renegade is the, you know, um, Dirty Harry with a blaster instead of a forty-four. Right. Um, I know best, and I'm going to get the job done how I think best. Right. And then the last 15 minutes, no, it's just the magical AI with the Reaper puppets. Make a call. So... They really did make your choices almost not matter in those last 15 minutes. Indeed. Or at least that's what it seemed like. So if you've been, you know, otherwise... And this is... And also the morality conflicts between the choices, right? You've just spent, you know, three games trying to understand and create peace between the Quarians and the Geth. But if you destroy the Reapers, you kill them. If you control the Reapers, well, now that's a rather renegade decision, isn't it? Saying that I know best and I'm going to be the space god in control of the Reapers? Yeah. And don't even get me started on synthesis. I don't know what the hell that's about. <laughs> <laughs> don't, even, don't even get me started on any of the scientific mumbo jumbo. But so now, it, and that's kind and of so what, that's. I think that's really what it comes down to is that the choices that you know have up until this point, there's been some gray stuff, right. but not on that scale. Not on a I am one dude making a call that will have these galaxy shaking ramifications and they overlap and i can see what bioware might have been going for no choice is perfect right right and i know at 15 uh first playing this and then later as a 18 year old playing the uh finale i mean we all and i think a lot of people wanted this we wanted the big star wars-esque space battle we unite the fleet we blow the reapers up <laughs> and then Shepard gets to go retire on an island somewhere with his whoever he's dating if you date somebody right or just go retire and drink beers with his uh, cop buddy Garrus everybody loves Garrus Garrus is awesome so you either wanted the happy ending where choices really didn't matter or you want or you but you got the confusing ending where the choices, choices still didn't, didn't matter. matter. And so when people say the choices didn't matter, I don't think that's as important as they didn't get what they wanted. Well, I mean, that's... Because we, if we, we, okay, we, 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 we've seen a what, lot of game series. We've seen a okay. lot of games, television. Oh, yeah. Uh, that, that you you want... I mean, we just talked about it with The Walking Dead. Mm-hmm. Um, or, well, not, I guess not just talked about it. That was a while ago. Um, but you, you know, you want something. You see something. You see the writing on the wall. And then either the writers planned too big and just couldn't tie it all together, right. 
or they just didn't care or and so you just didn't get what you wanted and so when people say you know, they wanted kind of, their, when people say they want because yeah, let's compare and contrast here right the ending of mass effect 2 if you do your research you do your homework you help out your team so that they're loyal. It's a binary state. They're either loyal or they're not. If they're loyal, they have almost a 0% chance of dying. If they're not loyal, it's kind of 50-50, depending on other choices you make. Right. You upgrade your ship. You survive a lot better. Right. And um, so if you make the right choices, you get a happy ending. And yes. that's what people wanted with 3. Let me make the right choices to get a happy ending. By saying that choices doesn't matter. No, it's they wanted the happy ending by following a guide somewhere. Because mm -hmm. that's what they did with 2. Gotcha. And so I think that's what it is, is that if I do things right, and that, that's something I've not quite as uh, firm on anymore, just because you do the right thing doesn't mean it always work out. And no, so, well, and that's, we, we talked about uh, that in our, our uh, Why Korra, The Legend of Korra was mm -hmm. so good, which a flame war started on the internet right after that. Yeah, right. That was insane. But no, but we've talked about... The ideas of, of, of sometimes you do the right thing and choices don't matter or they don't or you don't get what you wanted from that, mm -hmm. you know, or bad things can happen even though your character may have made the right choice. That's something that so many it, TV, video games, movies, people struggle with. People yeah. can't seem to make that thing work. No, and I and, and it's only been done right a couple of times, and even in like like you know, and we, we, going back to the Korra thing, it was one of the only things that was about done right in Korra because there's a lot that there's a lot wrong with Korra. Yeah, but that was one of the few things that was done right is that you do the thing with the best of intentions, and it comes to bite you in the butt later. And indeed, that's, indeed, and so you know that's the the question, right? Is do you destroy the Reapers but kill your new allies? Do you control the Reapers? Thinking you know best, and then the third ending, I don't understand. So, <laughs> I don't understand. And so, no, and I think that's what people mean is that they wanted another suicide mission. That's what it's called in Mass yeah, Effect Two. Yeah, that's yeah, the, yeah. Is they say they say if I get the upgrades and I you know if I you know go through things right, I cure the genophage, I create peace between the Corians and the Geth, I deserve that happy ending. But they didn't get it. Yeah, that's really weird too to end a game not on a happy ending note. And only few games that I can actually... KOTOR and KOTOR 2 were kind of... Well, I guess KOTOR kind of ended on a happy note. KOTOR 2 Depending was, on which ending you got. I mean, well, I'm sure Revan was very happy being back at the head of the Sith fleet. Or going back to being a Jedi. But, well, yeah, and that's... We're not even going to get into the... But either way, he's gone by 2. But, yeah, yeah. There, there are a lot of the... Well, and that was the continuation. Yeah. That, but it's really, really hard to tie a game where you say choices matter... And have and games now today are doing very good jobs with it. Having but four the, or five, Mass Effect even three six, released six, yeah. six different. Endings. There's a few games I've heard that have like eight different endings. But this on one, was, this released eight years ago on old hardware. Yeah, and, yeah, they. And also, the you, we were talking about you know something last night, and you said, "Wow, two year turnaround. That's pretty quick." Well, between Mass Effect two and three was a two year turnaround. Yeah. Except it wasn't different teams; it was the same team. So there was probably a lot of... Well, and there, there was a lot of developmental stuff going on mm -hmm. with all of the Mass Effects. And I wonder... Uh, because if, they were going to try some stuff, found out it probably wasn't going to work, and then they changed some stuff. And, and then, you know, the rumor is, and this comes from uh, Jason... Uh, Jason? No. I'll remember his name here in a second as soon as the video is over. <laughs> is it Jason Schreier? Um, Why do we suck at names? I don't know, we but... Ha we know anyway, the names. Schreier, we talk Schreier, about the names. Can we get to the video and go... Oh, dur, uh, dur. People can correct me in the uh, comments below, but Schreier, you know who I'm talking about, game people. Um, he did a big, you know, expose, and I think it's even a book now, uh, Blood, Sweat, and Pixels, uh, going into the developments of a lot of these games, the original Destiny, Mass Effect 3, all these. And EA was putting a lot of pressure on Bioware to get this out quickly. EA is... And so if they could have had that two-year extra development time, if it, you know, same time between Mass Effect and Mass Effect 2, mm -hmm. three, four years... Is you figure, yeah, Mass Effect 1 was published in 07, but it had been worked on for a long time. Yes. Um, so if you had that same amount of time, would we have gotten the same result? Could we have gotten something at least a little bit more expansive? I mean, that's been the question for how many games? Indeed. I, I mean... I think it comes down to just... And this is where I go between what people wanted and what we got and versus uh, just plain up bad writing. It is bad writing to introduce the godlike AI in the last minute. 
they released a DLC that supposedly explains its creation, but that you're still charging 10 bucks for it, and it came after launch. So, no, I don't count that. It's still bad writing. You're just justifying yeah. your bad writing. Um, you, um, then you have endings that neither, no, nothing is satisfactory. You can kill the Reapers, but then you kill your new allies. You can be the... You know, you can save everybody, but then you have to be an immortal Reaper god for the rest of your existence. Or you make everybody cyborgs. And... Which is just a massive invasion of privacy. I also agree about the privacy thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it's... Uh, no, and so I think that's what it comes down to, is that the setup, the execution, and like I said, I've softened a lot about these. I can still enjoy this trilogy now for what it is. Right. But I can still point to that last 15 minutes and say what it does is it doesn't destroy the franchise. It doesn't undermine everything that happened, as I tried to illustrate earlier in this episode. But what it is is an example of bad writing that was rushed together to get a project done as opposed to a true artistic vision that had been the culmination throughout. I'm gonna have to play the games. I can bring them up. They're worth a playthrough, and yeah. uh, music, gameplay, character, all fantastic. We'll see if you think feel the same about the final 15 minutes that uh, the rest of us do. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Thank you guys so much for watching A Drink With Crazy. That was our discussion on the Mass Effect trilogy, which I'm actually going to have to play now. I'll probably have uh, had this guy bring them up. Yeah. And uh, don't forget to go to the end of this video all the way and figure out how you guys can support the channel even more. Uh, we do appreciate you watching this, and hopefully we will see you guys on the next one. Thank you for watching A Drink With Crazy. If you liked the conversation, make sure to click here to see more.